Well, hey guys, welcome back to the q and In today's video, I wanted to address a topic that I get many questions on, and that is how much of a cream or ointment should be applied or should be used um, on certain areas of the body. This video is a follow-up to last week's Q&A wherein I talked all about topical steroids, discussed their common side effects and indications, as well as how topical steroid potency is influenced by different factors. So if you missed that and you're tuning into this video for some information on amounts of topical steroids, make sure you check out that video first. I think it will have some, some information that is helpful to preface this video. But today I wanted to go over just some general principles of topical creams and ointments such as uh, what you might have in, in your steroid creams and ointments that have been prescribed to you by your treating healthcare provider. Now, as with all of my videos, the information in my videos are is intended for general information purposes, sort of like the type of information that you might find in a pamphlet while you're sitting in the doctor's waiting room. Um, you know, general audience. This is not information that is intended to replace the advice of your treating healthcare provider. So any questions that you have about applying topical creams or ointments that have been prescribed to you, first and foremost, direct to your treating healthcare provider. I can't answer those for you. But in today's video, I just wanted to go over some general principles of how to use topical creams and ointments, such as a prescription steroid cream. And again, as I said last week, topical steroids are prescribed for many different types of skin conditions, most commonly types of eczema and dermatitis. And as I said last week, the potency of the topical steroid is influenced by a variety of factors. It is influenced by the individual steroid molecule, so hydrocortisone versus triamcinolone. It is influenced by the area of the body where the steroid is applied. It is influenced by um, the vehicle that the steroid is in. In other words, vehicles that are ointments, thick and greasy, like Vaseline, for example, tend to be more potent than things in lighter lotions and watery vehicles. Um, and the reason for this is that ointments are more occlusive and help to drive the, the active drug, the steroid molecule, into the skin. And then the other principle of um, topical steroid uh, potency that you should also be aware of is that when applied under occlusion, like under a bandage, under a sock, under a glove, under a shower cap in the scalp, steroid potency also increases because that extra occlusion on top of that further drives in the further drives the drug into the skin. So that's something else to, to also be aware of as I go over um, some just tips and pointers and information about applying topical steroids. But topical steroids are absorbed at different rates depending where on the body they are applied. Um, on the thin skin of the eyelids, um, in the genitalia, and under skin folds such as in the armpits, under the breasts in women, uh, in the abdominal fold area, they can be um, also absorbed at high rates because those are areas of occlusion or areas of very thin skin. Um, whereas on the thick skin of the palms and soles, uh, absorption is very, very low and oftentimes mid-potency or, or sort of you know, mid-tier strength steroids are completely useless on those areas. Um, so bear that in mind um, when asking, when directing your questions to your treating healthcare provider about where, about the location um, where, the, where the topical steroids should be applied. But if you've ever been given a prescription for a medication, oftentimes it's pretty straightforward if it's a pill, you know, take one pill by mouth a day for X number of days. Um, and we learn how to do that as a child. You swallow the pill, boom, very little thought goes in. But when you get a topical cream or a topical ointment, it is far less straightforward. It says apply a thin film to an affected area daily or apply a pea-sized amount. Very, very confusing. So this is one concept that I wanted to share with you all that I find to be incredibly helpful. It's what I use 
use as a dermatologist and dermatologists largely use to um, determine uh, dispensing of topical creams and and uh, ointments as far as how much to how much to dispense in the um, on the prescription and how many um, how many refills and the frequency of use it kind of helps guide that so you know for example if you're taking a pill by mouth the provider may say take one pill a day for 10 days they would probably dispense 10 pills and then you'd be done with it they're not going to dispense a hundred pills likewise for um, dermatologists we're not going to give you a biggie size tube of a topical steroid that you're only intended to use for a short period of time in a very very defined location on the body uh, that could that could be dangerous to give you too much um, you know and and then that that goes to waste so dermatologists are very and other healthcare providers are very strategic with the quantity that they dispense as well as the number of refills because oftentimes it is the intention with a prescription for a steroid cream in particular to start out with a strong formulation for a short duration of time have the individual come back for follow-up to make sure the disease has responded appropriately to the treatment and then aim to switch to a different less potent steroid to kind of help wean the individual off. So it's very strategic as far as how much is dispensed and the number of refills. They're obviously not going to give you a bunch of refills because if you don't come back and follow up then you've got all this really strong steroid out there, potential for adverse side effects. So that is, that's just kind of what goes on in the dermatologist's brain when they are dispensing medications to you in cream or ointment forms. Um, but in general, one little, one little principle that I think is very helpful and what we use is something called the fingertip unit, okay? So a fingertip unit refers to on an adult finger, I'm specifying an adult here. Um, in general, you know, an average size adult, women are obviously a little smaller than men. Um, a fingertip unit refers to uh, the surface area on the, what's called the volar surface of your index finger. Um, the distal phalanx, okay? So from this line here on your index finger to the tip, all right? And if you've got a long nail, it doesn't extend the entire length of the nail. It, it stops where it's the skin stops, okay? Um, so that is, that is one fingertip unit of, of uh, ointment or cream. So let's just see what that looks like. This is an over-the-counter hydrocortisone cream, 1% one of the weakest, the weakest steroid, um, steroids out there, why it's available over the counter. All right, so there you have it. That is roughly one fingertip unit, all right? One fingertip unit on the average adult, male or female, is roughly 0.4 to half a gram of, of the cream or ointment, all right? So this is, this is about a 30 gram tube, so, <laughs> I could do this 60 times and then it should be done, all right? So that gives you a rough estimate of that. All right, so one fingertip unit on an adult is about half a gram of cream or ointment. How far does that go? One fingertip unit equals half a gram of cream or ointment can cover on the average adult, male or female, the entire surface of the hand the entire surface, both sides of the hand, all right? Everything you're seeing here and everything you are seeing here, not the wrist, the entire surface of the hand, okay? Or, all right, or it can also cover one surface of both hands, all right? So if you just have a rash on the top, uh, completely covering, you, if you have a, a confluent rash, on the entire surface of both hands, that must be miserable. Um, one fingertip unit should cover that entire rash, okay? Um, that's rarely the case, right? So you can imagine you really don't need, you really don't need a whole lot of, of a cream or an ointment to, to be applied effectively onto the area. That, that gets you a good thin film of treatment to these to the targeted areas. 
more is not better. <laughs> Using more is not getting you more cream, it's not getting you more drug. And using, applying more, um, you know, doesn't increase the strength. And for topical medications, you, particularly in cream or ointment forms that are very occlusive, you don't need a huge heaping glob on there. You only need a very, very thin film. So, you know, again, one fingertip unit to the entire hand will get you a thin film of, of the medication at an effective, at, at, its, at its dosage, you know, basically. Um, you, heaping more on does not increase the strength uh, of the steroid. That is a misconception that if you just pile on more, um, it, will, it will increase the strength. It doesn't, okay? Steroids don't work like that, okay? So just, just know that one fingertip unit will get you both sides of a hand and heaping more on there isn't, isn't going to be helpful or heaping more on there is not helpful and you'll just burn through your prescription pretty quickly. All right, so if you have been advised, for example, to cover your entire hand once a day for 10 days, a 15 gram tube of cream or ointment is likely what is going to be dispensed. That is, that's one of the one of the smaller tubes, that should be more than enough, all right? So if you are buzzing through it faster than that, you're using too much and you're wasting it, all right? So that's, that is, that's likely the size that would be, would be dispensed, you know, roughly a 15 gram tube for 10 days of once a day application to the entire, to the entire hand. Chances are you don't have a rash covering all the surface of your entire hand. So, you know, it should last more than 10 days <laughs> for sure. You really only need, you really only need a tiny amount. Now, two and a half fingertip units should cover the entire face and all surfaces of the neck, as well as the ears of the average adult male or female. And that's roughly 1.25 grams of cream or ointment. Now, for the trunk or the, the body, excluding the arms, excluding the neck, to cover one side of the trunk, meaning your entire back or your entire chest and abdomen, you need seven fingertip units to cover that entire surface. So if you've been, but if you've been advised to apply the medication to the entire back, then it should take you seven fingertip units or uh, three and a half grams per application. One arm, your entire arm, so from about here to stopping at the wrist, is three fingertip units for one entire arm. One entire leg is six fingertip units. And then unlike your hand where you got away with one fingertip unit, your foot is generally larger. That is about two fingertip units to cover the entire surface of the foot. So I will put these little measurements down below in the description box. And to give you a point of reference, to cover the entire surface of an adult male, on average, it takes about 20 grams of a cream or ointment to cover every surface. Now everything, now all of the information that I've gone over up until this point has been exclusively for adults, meaning adult index fingers and adult bodies not children. This is very important. Children are smaller um, and they have less surface area. So fingertip units are going to be different in children based on their age, roughly. Um, you know, and so in the description box, I will list below some relative fingertip units in different age groups of children but those fingertip estimates in children based on age are still using an adult fingertip unit. So meaning if you are a caregiver of a child um, and you are applying their topical medications, this refers to your finger on their bodies, <laughs> not their little finger on their own bodies. And within that set of information, I will specify children and, and, and children, not infants. Infants, um, infant skin is immature and absorbs topical medications much more at a much, much higher rate than, than children and significantly higher than adults. Their skin barrier is still forming and therefore these quantities do not apply to them. And best to discuss 
from the get-go if you have been prescribed these to, for an infant um, or young young baby, uh, best to discuss ex explicitly with the treating health care provider where, how much, and how frequently. So check in the description box. Again, I will list below the information on the fingertip units for using an adult finger for adults and then using an adult finger for children. Um, and hopefully this helps you to understand a little bit of the logic behind how you are, how these are dispensed in terms of how the prescriptions are written and why you are always given such a tiny tube. You know, oftentimes people say, they only gave me this tiny little tube, like how am I, I use that up and nothing flat. Well, chances are you, you were putting on way too much um, or putting it on too thick. I think the logic is easier to follow for an oral medication. So for example, if you have ever been prescribed an oral medication like an antibiotic and the provider wants you to take one pill a day for 14 days, we'll just say that as an example, they're going to dispense 14 pills. They're not going to dispense 100 with three or four refills. You're supposed to take it for the, that amount of time only and then they either want to see you back to make sure you got better or it's assumed that you got better if you don't come back. And the same sort of rationale holds true for how dermatologists dispense prescription creams and ointments. They give a small amount uh, for an indicated amount of time to a specific location. And the logic and rationale behind dispensing prescription creams and ointments follows a similar vein, but for you as the as the patient or you know user of these, <laughs> it's not as straightforward as swallow a pill. It's apply this, how much do I apply? It's 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 not as packaged as a pill. Uh, you know, it's not encapsulated. And and that really, really is a tricky area to navigate. So I hope in, in my intention in making this video is to give you some general information about how it is that uh, topical creams and ointments, particularly steroids, um, are dispensed, and how to apply them, and how much how much to apply them to cover to cover a, a target area of the body. Um, and again, as I said in the beginning, always, always, always be sure you go over all of this with with your treating healthcare provider. This is merely intended to be general information to, to, to be helpful, but not as a replacement for the advice of your treating healthcare provider. But I hope this video is helpful to you all. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.